I'm going to blow your mind this morning with a simple concept in four words. Black women's lives matter. My name is Latasha D. Mays, and I have the great opportunity to be your first presenter at the first TEDx University of Pittsburgh. Can I get a round of applause for that? <laughs> this is an exciting moment. I hope you understand this is an exciting opportunity uh, for you as students, but also uh, for this institution. So since I'm first, I better be good. No pressure or anything. But some of you may be thinking, black women's lives matter. Of course, that is not even a question. Some of you may not know what to think. Others of you may think, oh, it's just another hashtag that is a form of protest reflective of the current times that we are in. But this concept that black women's lives matter speaks to my soul and has inspired my work for human rights not only in Pittsburgh, but in the Rust Belt region and across the country. The idea that black women's lives matter, uh, it examines the very complex intersection of black women's lives that can be, at most times, powerful and resilient, while at the same time feeling marginalizing and feelings of invisibility. But black women's lives matter dismantles prevailing notions around race and gender, and it really gives us an opportunity to understand the black woman's experience. I do not profess to speak for all black women today. We are not a monolithic group, though we share a legacy that is deep and rich and amazing. But I can speak to my experience as a black woman. I can speak to the experiences of the black women in my life. I can speak to the experiences of the black women and girls that I serve every day. And I can speak to the experiences of black women who are my ancestors that made it possible for me to stand on this stage before you today. I'm going to share my experience as a black woman through the lives of inspiring black women who have sought reformation in the face of assimilation. You may have never heard this name before today. Nanny Helen Burroughs in 1907 was a 28-year-old black woman, woman who began to plan for what was called the National Training School for Women and Girls in Washington, D Washington DC. Two years later, she would open the school and she would serve as its first president. The school adopted the motto, the motto, we specialize in the holy impossible. So what does that mean? It was unheard of at the turn of the century for a black woman to start a school funded by the black community that, that was for the training of black women and girls to have the greatest opportunities for employment, education, and participation in civic life. Nanny Helen Burroughs understood that black women's lives matter. In a post-Reconstruction society, she was able to brilliantly navigate movements for racial uplift that often focused on black men, and the women's suffrage movement that advanced the right of white women to vote. She was an outspoken public figure for both racial justice and for women's rights, and she sought to create the greatest opportunities for the black women and girls that she served. And her legacy continues to this day. There's a one and a half mile stretch in Washington, D.C. that bears her name, Nanny Helen Burroughs Avenue in Northeast D.C. That reminds me of a time at Pitt when you know, this is the type of opportunity that Nanny created for me to have. And I remember at the end of my freshman year calling home, talking to my mother, my brother, my friends. I was calling them to come out. I was coming out as a feminist. 
So I thought that the world would stand, time would stand still as I made this monumental announcement, only to, for them to reply, I know, or this is not news, this was just news to me. Uh, during my time here at Pitt, you know, I had the opportunity to enroll in Africana Studies classes and Women's Studies classes. You know, by my junior year, I was active in the leadership of Black Action Society and Campus Women's Organization. Until one day, this uh, black male activist who I, whom I really respected, he said, he referred to me, oh, that black girl in Campus Women's Organization. Crushed. The weight of having to prioritize my race or my gender came crashing down. But like many Helen Burroughs, I refused to choose because black women's lives matter. And at that intersection, I was able to achieve great things on this campus. One of the organizers of today's event gave me a newspaper from 2002 where I was on the cover of the Pitt News and I had just won the election for student government board uh, in an unprecedented race as one of the, it was the only black woman to win in that election. For me, I was able to organize for policies that advanced affirmative action and worked against policies of racial profiling on campus, but also to end, work to end sexual assault and violence on, our camp, on this campus and to advocate for emergency contraception for women when they needed it, and also to advance Black Women's Week, which was a major part of the programming of Black, Black Action Society, and that was the precursor for New Voices Pittsburgh. That is Nanny Helen Burroughs and how she inspired that part of my life. On January 25th, 1972, I uh, to seek the uh, major party endorsement for President of the United States. She also was the first woman to seek the Democratic presidential nomination. All in all, this made her the first black woman to run for president of the United States of America. And in her speech that she gave in Brooklyn, New York that day, she said, I stand before you today as president, as candidate for president of the United States. I am not the candidate of black America, of black America although I am black and proud. I am not the candidate of the women's movement of this country, although I am a woman and equally proud of that. I stand before you today as a candidate for the people of America, and my presence here today represents a new era in American political history. For those of you who agree with me that the institutions of this country belong to all of the people who inhabit it. Join me in an effort to reshape society and regain our destiny as we go down the Chisholm Trail for 1972. These words inspired a nation. Although she ran against all the odds, she was able to make it possible for us to have a black American become president of the United States. She found herself both unsupported by black political leadership. She found herself unsupported by the leaders of the second wave feminist movement. But she understood that when black women's lives matter in American politics, we all benefit. We all benefit. And that, in spite of that, black women remain the highest, uh, they remain, we remain the leaders in voter participation in this country. We are the leaders in what is called the rising American electorate. Uh, black women ages 18, 29 have the highest rates of voter participation. And even with all of that political power, we still are not represented in the political a realm of this country. So of the 535 seats that we could possibly hold, we hold, black women hold 16 seats, representing a mere 
percent. So again, back to my time here at Pitt, I remember I voted for president in 2000. I remember going to bed and we had one president and waking up and we had another. And in all of that, I decided that in 2032, I am going to run for president. I figured I, thank you. <laughs> you can clap for that because I'm asking for your vote today. I figured that I need 30 years at least to get ready for that day. And until we get there, I'm building the society that I want, the society that I want to live in that values the lives of black women, where black women's lives matter in American politics, policy, and, decision, and the decision making of our nation. Shirley Chisholm has inspired me to continue to do the work that I do today. Charlotte D. Stroud, a 21-year-old woman uh, who's the youngest daughter of 10 children, who's from Philadelphia. She spent all of her life serving her entire family. She served this country in the military. She is a college-educated woman who is now a leader in the union, Unite Here in Philadelphia. And on May 16th, on May 16th, 1981, she gave birth to yours truly. That would be me, the cutie pie right there. My mother raised my brother and I in West Philadelphia. She sacrificed so that we could have the greatest opportunities, even at her own expense. She instilled in me a sense of justice. I inherit my commitment to always seek social justice and social change and human rights for all people. It's in my DNA. She always expects the best for me and the best of me as I put my talents out into the world. So I remember when I told her I was on the track, I have a business degree from our great, this great university, and I was on my way to becoming this very rich and famous uh, energy lobbyist. And I mean, the, the path was set. And then I told my mother, that instead of my quest to take over corporate America, I was going to spend that summer in Pittsburgh shaping the minds of incoming students at the University of Pittsburgh as a freshman peer counselor. Needless to say, there was silence on the phone. She didn't quite understand why I would choose that particular path. But again, she always supported me and my endeavors. During that summer that I was a freshman peer counselor, I met a young woman who was 17 years old, and she was coming to visit the university. I asked her if she had a business card. She did not. She's like, I'm 17 years old. Why would I have a business card? <laughs> but she and I would become partners in a lifelong journey to create spaces that affirm black women's lives matter. Her name is Becca Zela Mguni, and together she and I founded New Voices Pittsburgh. This is Becca Zela here on the far right. We founded New Voices Pittsburgh with amazing trailblazing leaders, Lois Tony McClendon, and also Maria Nicole Smith Dartruche. So 100 years, over 100 years after Nanny Helen Burroughs started her national training school for women and girls, 32 years after Shirley Chisholm ran for president, 22 years, almost 23 years after Charlotte Stroud gave birth to me, we were able to create a movement here in this city where we centralize the lives of black women and girls. The mission of New Voices Pittsburgh, we were founded in 2004, is to build a social change movement dedicated to the health and well-being of black women and girls through leadership development, 
human rights, and reproductive justice. What is reproductive justice? The human right of us all to control our bodies, our sexuality, our gender, our work, and our reproduction. Why black women and girls? Because black women's lives matter. Because we are the experts of our experience. Because we have a great deal to share in this world, to make our society and our nation what we say we want to be for all of us. Because the life expectancy of black women in this city is comparable to that of women living in developing countries such as Honduras or Jamaica. Because we don't see ourselves at the decision-making tables. And that was why we started New Voices to begin with. I am proud to say that for over 11 years, New Voices has served thousands and thousands of black women and girls and women of color. We now operate in Pittsburgh, in New Voices Pittsburgh, in Cleveland, through New Voices Cleveland, and Philadelphia, through New Voices Philadelphia. We have the opportunity to lead a powerful reproductive justice movement that affirms that black women's lives matter. And it is because of that we are called to put ourselves out there. We are called to articulate a vision of what we want and who we want to be. And part of that inspired my decision to run for city council here in the city of Pittsburgh. We have to create the cities, the communities, the neighborhoods, the universities, and other institutions that we want to live in or engage in or be educated in. I feel that this is gonna be a platform for me to help create affordable, uh, sustainable, and healthy communities for all. If elected to council, I will be challenging our city to be America's most livable city for all who live here. No matter what you look like, what your background is, or what your aspirations are, I believe just like for my life as a, black woman, as a black woman living in this city, that all things are truly possible. Now, if I win, if I win when I win on May 19th, I will be one of the first, I'll be the first black woman to represent this district. I'll be the first person of color. I'll be first woman of color among a host of other first across the many parts of my identity. But I accept the challenge because I understand that black women's lives matter and that I must be part of a, a movement, be a part of inspiration that affirms that for black women. So I wanna say that Nanny Helen Burroughs' li life mattered, Shirley Chisholm's life mattered, Charlotte D. Stroud's Life matters, my life matters. To all the black women and girls out there, your life matters too. I wanna to dedicate this presentation to my grandmother, Ethel Walker, who always has my back, and to Alma Speed Fox, who is the, the mother of both civil rights and women's rights in Pittsburgh. And to the histories of black women and girls, told and untold, black women's lives matter past, present, and future. Thank you very much.